So let's recap what we did in the last video. We had this differential equation here, and we found that it had two linearly independent solutions, e to the t and e to the 3t. And we said that the general solution to this differential equation is a linear combination of these two solutions, just a constant times one solution plus another constant times the other solution. But what I want to talk about in this video is like, why is this the case? Why is the general solution a linear combination? And how does that even result from this property of linearity of the differential equation? So let's get started. We know that y is equal to e to the t. We know that that's a solution to this differential equation. It satisfies it. But what would happen if we were to multiply the solution by a constant, like c? Where c could be any uh, number like 2, 0.5, negative 12, anything. It's just a constant. Is a constant times a solution still a solution? Let's find out. So we take the first derivative, that's just c times e to the t. And likewise, the second derivative, that's also c times e to the t. So if we're to plug these into here, we get that the second derivative minus 4 times the first derivative plus 3 times y, that's equal to 0. Now, every term has a c times e to the t term, so we can just factor that out. We get c times e to the t times 1 minus 4 plus 3, that should be equal to 0, and we know that 1 minus 4 plus 3 is 0, so we get that 0 is equal to 0, and this holds. So c times e to the t, that's also a solution, which means if we multiply a solution by any constant, it is still a solution to this differential equation. That means that pi times e to the t satisfies us. That means a million times e to the t satisfies us. That means like 0 0.001 times e to the t satisfies it. They're all solutions. Now, uh, let's take a look at one other thing. We know that e to the t is a solution, and we know that e to the 3t is a solution. But what would happen if we were to add them together? Is the sum of two solutions also a solution? Let's find out. Let's take the first derivative again, that's just e to the t plus 3e to the 3t. Let's take the second derivative, that's just e to the t plus 9e to the 3t. Now we can plug that into the differential equation, and we get the second derivative, e to the t plus 9, whoops, e to the 3t uh, minus 4 times the first derivative, e to the t plus 3e to the 3t plus 3 times e to our zeroth derivative. We're gonna, that should be equal to 0. We'll see. So let's group together all the two, like the e to the t terms and all the e to the 3t terms together. So we get e to the t, I'm just going to factor it out in like, say, times 1, minus 4, plus 3, plus e to the 3t, just grouping all these terms together, which is times 9, minus 4 times 3 is minus 12, plus 3, is that equal to 0? We know that 1 minus 4 plus 3 is 0, and 9 minus 12 plus 3 is 0. So we have e to the t times 0 plus e to the 3t times 0 is equal to 0. And that is also true. So a sum of two solutions is also a solution. Now let's combine these two facts that we learned. Let's take our solutions, multiply them by constants, and add them together. But there's a name for that. What's it called? It's called taking a linear combination of our two solutions. And we know that since multiplying by a constant works and by adding our two solution works, we know that this linear combination is also a solution. In fact, we like to call it the 
general solution because it can describe all possible solutions to this differential equation. Describes every possible solution. So if you have a linear differential equation, the general solution is a linear combination of the linearly independent solutions. You're going to hear the word linear quite a lot in this video. But that's all a very important property that all is the case for a linear differential equation. Well, what makes linear differential equations so special? Now, in order to really answer that, we have to take a step back. Let's just move away from differential equations and just think about, like, math in, like, abstract terms. So let's say we have a function g of x. We say that something operates on this function. We can call it an operator f if it inputs one function and we get out another function. Let's say h of x. Now, there are lots of examples of operators, it's just something that changes one function to another function. Like, multiplying by a constant is an operator. Taking a derivative is an operator. Squaring something is an operator. All these things to in take in one function as an input and give another function as an output. Just, like, think of it in abstract terms. But there's an important class of operators called linear operators. And linear operators all share one very important property. Is that if you have the input a times g of x plus b times h of x, here g, and g of x and h of x, they're just two arbitrary functions, and a and b, those are just two constants. That this is equal to a times f operated on g of x plus b times f operated on h of x. Now, this, is, this may seem fairly confusing when we think of it in like very abstract terms, but we'll find that there are quite a lot of examples of linear operators. Like, let's, uh, to make things more clear, let's instead of uh, using this input, Let's take a look at 2x plus 3x squared. And we'll find that multiplying by a constant is a linear operator. Because if we were to multiply this by 4, we know that's the same as just 2 times 4 times x plus two uh, 3 times 4 times x squared. And we'll find that, well, basically saying that this operator on this entire input is the same as it operating on one input with the same scalar and plus operating the other input with the same scalar. Now we'll find that there are other examples of linear operators like taking a derivative is a linear operator because if we take the derivative we take the derivative term by term that's two times the derivative of x plus 3 times the derivative of x squared. We'll find that uh, taking a definite integral is a linear operator. Because likewise we integrate term by term and we know that this is equal to 2 times the definite integral of x dx plus 3 times the definite integral of at one definite integral of x squared dx. So taking derivatives and integrating, well, integrating definitely, that's also a linear operator. Now, what's an example of something that's not a linear operator? What, well, one important class of like nonlinear operators is raising to an exponent. Because if we had this 2x plus 3x squared, we know that, well, if we have this all squared, we know that this is not equal to 2 times x squared plus 3 times x squared squared. We know that we have to factor it out and we'll have other terms, so raising to an exponent is not a linear operator. But we can form other linear operators by combining these, like uh, taking a derivative and multiplying by a constant is a linear operator. 
Taking higher derivatives is a linear operator. If we add two linear operators, the result is almost like a linear operator. In fact, we can say something like taking a derivative of a function, or second derivative of a function, minus four times, taking the derivative of a function, plus three times that function. That's also a linear operator. But this was just our differential equation. It's basically the same thing, except we had it under one constraint that this was equal to zero. So it turns out our linear differential equation is also a linear operator. And since it's a linear operator, we can use, uh, some people like to use like a little shorthand. Like if this is all equal to zero, then they may just say that the linear operator of this differential equation acting on y is equal to zero. Here, our L acting on y, that's just analogous to this whole like f acting on g of x. So in this particular case, you can think of L as just equal to like the second derivative minus four times the first derivative plus three. And L acting on Y is just this acting on Y. So it's a little shorthand notation. But if we think about it, this kind of makes sense that this linear differential equation, or at least this bit here, is a linear operator. Because let's look back at the definition we used for a linear differential equation. We said that a differential equation was linear if it had like the general form a n of x times the nth derivative of a function with respect to x plus let's a, n, a to the n minus 1 let's say of x times the n minus 1 derivative all the way down to let's just say a1 of x times the first derivative plus a naught to act on y. We said that this was a the form of a linear differential equation, and the reason is, is it's, become, it's composed of linear operations. Now, if you recall, we said that if we square or raise any of these derivative terms to an exponent, or if we multiply any of these derivative terms by each other, then it would be a nonlinear differential equation. And we know now that's because raising to an exponent, that's not a linear operation. So a linear differential equation is composed of a linear operations. So how does this property of linearity show up for linear differential equations? Well, we'll find, well, we know, well, Let's just say that we have uh, two solutions that satisfy this differential equation, y1 and y2, such that L operating on y1 is just zero and L operating on y2 is equal to zero. That means that we can kind of like work in reverse and say that L operating on c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2 that's equal to using our main property of linear operators that is equal to C1 times L acting on Y1 plus C2 times L acting on Y2. And we know that and uh, we know that L acting on Y1 that's zero and L acting on Y2 is equal to zero so we get that this whole thing is equal to zero which means that this whole thing is also a solution. It also satisfies this condition, that the linear ap operator acting on something is equal to zero. So because our differential equation is linear, we know that if we have two solutions that satisfy it, that the, we can form a linear combination of those two solutions, and the result will still satisfy it. And that's exactly what we found up here. We found that if we had two solutions that, the, that satisfy this differential equation, that the linear combination of them also satisfied. We just kind of worked in like reverse up here. 
here we went from the property and just went forward and up here we had this and went backwards. So that's quite a lot. Let's just recap what we found in this video. We we're able to define a linear operator and we said that our linear differential equations, that's just some, a differential equation that's composed of linear operators and because of this property that all linear operators follow we know that if we were to have two solutions then a linear combination of these two solutions is also a solution so we're able to like theoretically show the origin of why a linear combination of two solutions is also a solution it all stems from this wonderful property of linearity. Now, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. We'll continue on with more second order differential equations in the next video.